Hi, my jar of pickles. My name is Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food with Keto Under 20. Just for today. That's all you have to worry about is just for today. Unless you're grocery shopping, and then you got to bring a whole bunch of stuff in. So it's all there ready. And maybe some prepping. Maybe you, you dedicate an hour or two on your days off to prepping. So there's good stuff sitting in glass, not plastic, containers in your fridge. The grab-and-goes, like the meat sticks that I showed, like hard-boiled eggs, like celery sticks that can have cream cheese or, or cashew butter or almond butter added in a heartbeat, all those kind of things. I even have that um, spicy chai um, tea that um, concentrate that I can add to a cup of almond milk and be in heaven in just a second after I Nutribullet it for the froth because it's all about the froth anyway. All right, so it is the third week in January and we had the influx of all the people. I read all their stuff. Hi, I'm new to keto. Hi, what do I do? Hi, I don't know what to do. Where do I begin? And so here they all are after um, Christmas. And so um, my question to you if you're new or my question to you if you're not so new but you're kind of feeling a little stale, where would you like to be April Fool's Day? So it's going to be February and March and a little bit of January. Where would you like to be April Fool's Day? And I'm not fooling. Is this something that you really want to get your health back, to maybe lose some pounds, to just feel better about yourself? That's why I'm here. Um, you know, I, I sure, I'd love to lose the persnickety pounds that just kind of sit there. And I'm thinking maybe it has something to do with being 66 because I'm not doing anything different. And um, I'm not a big believer in jumping into the carb load or a cheat day or any of those sort of things that some keto people do just to shape shift what's going on inside their body and shock it a little bit. I, I don't like to do that because of my food addiction. I don't want to reintroduce something that could make me go a little hoo-hoo. Like even with the Brussels sprouts, I now count my Brussels sprouts when I have them. And um, that takes care of that. You know, whether I have six, seven, eight, nine of them, I count it. Same thing with asparagus spears. I count with the spinach. I just cook a whole bunch and count it as four cups. And, um, you know, an entire tub I cook. And um, Greg has half, I have half by the time it's all done shrinking. You know what it looks like. And so um, I, don't, I don't mess around with my, with my um, body trying to jumpstart it into something. You know, a lot of people have those carb uploads. And um, even, even with good things like maybe a bowl of oatmeal, maybe um, a sweet potato, something like that, just to shock it a little bit with an extra amount of carbs. And um, I, don't, I don't think of doing it now. Um, who knows? It could happen. But for now, I just like consistently having the same thing day after day, week after week, meal after meal, and not tampering with it because I love what I eat. And it makes me feel good. It makes me have that feeling of FOMO, fear of missing out. I don't have that because I feel like I'm doing keto under 20 in a proper way. And I just don't want to skate around it. I see some people do some little changes, some tweaking with foods or ideas with more carbs or um, giving it up and then doing something else and then coming back. And I don't know what that does to my insides. You know, when you're 66 and, and, and your metabolism is slowed down to that of a, <laughs> a, of a tortoise on a 120 degree day someplace, someplace where it's hot, um, you know, with just moving so slow. Um, I don't really want to do anything except be able to keep my food the way that I'm having it. I go between 15, 1600 calories a day, lots of fat, always over 70%. Like to keep my protein at 20 
and I like to keep my um, my carbs under 20. I don't subtract the net fiber at this point because I feel I'm getting enough good leafy greens and fibrous um, veggies. I'm, I'm no longer having my little pieces of uh, organic berries. I gave that up. I gave up my um, beloved baked Yukon potato um, on, this, on the big green egg night. And um, so now I'm just having veggies, cauliflower, asparagus, and Brussels sprouts with the, with the steak. And tonight, uh, this week's steak is grass-fed filet. And so I look forward to that. So anyway, where would you like to be April 1st? If I'm no place else but right where I am today, that makes me very happy because that means I'm eating everything that I want to eat. The amounts are weighed and measured. I'm happy with it. Love the fats. Love my bulletproof coffee. I haven't um I haven't felt the need to switch up my bulletproof coffee. Sometimes I'll have the brain octane from Bulletproof Company. Sometimes I'll have Calapo uh, coconut oil. Other times I'll have Kerrygold butter. Also, I have Organic Valley cultured butter, which I will be cracking real soon. And so instead of having two of those in my Bulletproof coffee with heavy cream and some almond milk, um, I, I'm only having one of them, and then I'm having... Um, a half a tablespoon of butter or coconut oil in my second cup of coffee, which is a little bulletproofed, but not not like the first one. And so um, I'm happy with everything I'm having. I have uh, right now it's middle of the winter, so I'm you know attracted to the bone broth to have every day, and um, figuring out a way to keep that active when it's summer. And um, you know I don't really feel like sitting with a cup of hot broth. But I love my coffee hot, too, so maybe that's okay. So, where do you want to be April 1st? I'd love to lose five by April Fool's Day. And, um, but if I don't, it's, it's okay because I'm happy where I'm at. I'm at a place where I never, ever, ever was. And when I listen to podcasts where people want to fit into their high school something, something, well, I weighed about 175 in high school, and I don't weigh 175 now, and I don't feel like gaining all that weight to fit into that thing from high school. So I'm in a very happy place. Um, what would your goals be for April 1st? Maybe it's being healthier. Maybe it's changing your lab work. Maybe it's hearing from the doctor. You're no longer pre-diabetic. What are your goals for um, close to 90 days from now, April Fool's Day? If you're new to keto, are you liking it? Will you stay with it? Do you see the the value? Even if your weight is not like dropping by pounds and pounds and pounds. Sometimes I read those testimonies and it's like, really? Really? You know, I see what people eat on what I ate in a day. And I know how hard they work to do what they do. And their weight's not like, you know, melting off of them. This is work. And if you've screwed around with your body like I have, there's a lot of resistance that they, your poor metabolism has to work through to get to the place where it, it could be a fat-burning machine. I don't know. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. But I know that I messed around with my food plan and all of my crazy, crazy, this will work, this, this time this will work, and, and jumping ship and doing all that kind of stuff. So I've been sugar-free and grain-free for... Um, about 16 months now, and I don't ever want to go back. And that's that's pretty solid for 16 months' worth. I'm not doing this until. I'm doing this until, you know, there's an obituary notice in the paper. So, <laughs> how morbid. Oh. So anyway, I hope you have a wonderful day. What are your goals for April 1st? Are they lofty? Are they fantasy? Are they real? Are you accepting are you looking at the keto way of eating as a lifestyle and not a get skinny fast kind of deal? Let me know. This has been Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food, under 20 carbs per day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye for now.